My name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show that shakes it like a Polaroid picture. Our two team captains each and every week are the man that shot Liberty Valance, Alan Bro, and the girl with kaleidoscope eyes, Miff Warhurst. <laughs> Alan's first guest tonight is an international icon who had his first hit in 1973 with The Show Must Go On and his most recent in 2006 with a remix of Thunder In My Heart. He's back with a new album called Don't Wait Until Tomorrow. Give it up for Leo Sayer. Yeah. <laughs> Alan's second team member is a musical comedian who has written and is about to star in Shane Warne, The Musical. Oh yes, it's the only stage show in which you're asked to turn your mobile phones on at the start of the performance. <laughs> Please welcome Eddie Perfect. <laughs> Myth's first guest tonight is a virtuoso and composer who has combined classical music with Indigenous Australian culture and taken it to the world. He's the only person to have ever played didgeridoo with the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Please welcome to the show, William Barton. Welcome, sir. This final guest is a comedian who has just released her first book entitled All That Happened at Number 26. Either she lived at Number 26 and it's a heartwarming biography, or she lived at Number 24 and it's a guide to being a peeping Tom. Please welcome back <laughs> Denise Scott. Now, look, let's start the show by talking to, uh, well, all of the guests, really, but in particular our musicians, about the places that your careers have taken you. Because, William, we just mentioned, you've played didgeridoo with the London Philharmonic Orchestra. How was that as an experience? Yeah, it was a great experience. You know, phenomenal musicians and with all those really old and expensive violins that I almost, you know, trod on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have an urge to look at, say, I don't know, the clarinet player and go, <laughs> that's not a woodwind instrument. <laughs> this is a woodwind. <laughs> I've still got the termites to prove it. <laughs> now, on the other hand, while we're talking amazing experiences, Leo, you are the only person we've ever had on this show mm -hmm. that also appeared on The Muppet Show. <gasps> yeah, I had a, a nice association with The Muppets and before that with Sesame Street as well. I did... Um, I did a, a Johnny Carson show, a chat show, where it was hosted by Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog um, announced me and I did a duet with Miss Piggy, which was really good fun. That was the first thing I ever did with them. And Miss Piggy looking me up and down, you know, and the puppet, John, I like this, looking at me and sort of saying, I never knew there was so much love. <laughs> <laughs> and while, look, while we're talking amazing on tour experiences, Denise uh, toured Australia earlier this year. Yes, I went to Tassie. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've, I've heard a story that you uh, you picked up a fan. Oh, well, in Launceston, right, done the gig, and afterwards this 21-year-old guy, Tristan, um, he comes up and goes, oh, you are awesome, you know. And then he says, wait till I tell my mum I've met Denise Richards. And um, I go, oh, you know, you, you can understand the mistake. Um, anyway, I said, no, I'm not Denise Richards. And he goes, sorry, sorry, Denise Dreisel. I go, no, I'm not Denise Dreisel. I, I, I'm Denise Scott. And he went, oh, sorry. Next day, swear to God, in Launceston, I meet him in Hamburger Bar, and he says... Oh, Denise, thank God I ran into you. I've been up all night making something special for you. And if you could come to my band gig tonight at the pub, I'd really appreciate it, right? So this is true. I go to the pub. I'm 53 years old. I go to the pub <laughs> in Launceston, and he's on stage playing keyboard, wearing a T-shirt, right, that says Denise Richards, Richards crossed out, Denise Drysdale, Drysdale crossed out, Denise Scott. Then there's a photo of me. <laughs> Underneath the photo, make makes me moist. <laughs> question that needs to be answered. Did you go there? Yeah. Uh, he's 21 years old. Of course yeah. I did. <laughs> All right, let's get into round one. <laughs> Niff and Alan will be picking topics. Everybody will be quizzed on them. Your choices tonight are ballads, composers, Latin music and goth. Alan, you can pick first tonight. I think we'll have ballads, please, Adam. Sweetenly, Miff. Well, we'll have to go composers, I think. Because of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that night in Tassie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll take composers. <laughs> Have you ever had a similar experience, William, with the didgeridoo? Yeah, here and there. <laughs> really? Has someone got a shirt saying, William Barton gives me wood? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, we'll start with ballads. Uh, right. Everyone on your buzzers, let's play Spicks and Specs. First question for one point. On her career-defining album, Broken English, who does Marianne Faithful sing a ballad about? Yes? Lucy Jordan. Uh, yes, the ballad of Lucy Jordan. First point of the show, Nick. Yeah. Two points. Have a look at this Nick Cave clip. I love their better than me. Originally a traditional ballad collected by folklorist Francis James Child, I need two things. The name of the song and the Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds album on which it featured. Um, Henry Lee. Is the name of the yeah. song, yes. Uh, and the album was not The Boatman's Call. Um, no. No, yes. Mood of Ballads. Yes, one point each. Well played, Alan. Uh, three points for your final question. Have a listen to these three gut-wrenching ballads. Name all three. Yes. Oh no. Um, I'm going to keep on loving you. Uh, yes, by Ario Speedwagon. Yeah, Tiamo was in there. By Laura God, Brannigan. Oh, I love you so. And Phil Collins. Um, against all odds. Yes, three points out of three. Oh, oh, now listen, uh, before we move on, seeing as we were just talking about ballads, mm. you've been working for a fair amount of... What, how long on Shane Warne the Musical? Uh, I reckon two, two years now. Why? What was the first... <laughs> <laughs> Why did you decide Shane Warne? Day. <laughs> I was on tour, actually. I mean, every town I went to, Shane Warne did something else ridiculous. And um, I just jokingly said to my manager that it'd make a great musical, and he was, like, massive cricket fans. We said, you've got to, got to read more. So I read every book on Shane Warne, which is painful, painful, <laughs> you know? Have you had to get into um, physical shape? <laughs> the role? Yeah, um, I think I actually have to lose a bit of weight, to be honest. And I got my hair dyed blonde and my girlfriend was very uh, kind enough to say, you know, you look a lot like Shane Warne, but just a little less athletic. <laughs> and, uh, that was nice. You know what could sort you out, though? Just give his mum a call. She's got a couple of tablets that can sort yeah. you out. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to composers. Your first question for one point. Uh, Baroque, classical or romantic, from which period did Brahms... Uh, yes? Um, look, I'd have romantic, to say, yeah, yeah romantic. Uh, romantic it was. Well played, Alan. Next question for two points. Name this world-renowned modern composer and the city in which he was born. Yes? Oh, Peter Sculthorpe. Yes, it is Peter Sculthorpe. There you go. Yeah. What city? Uh, Launceston. Yes, indeed, it's Launceston. <laughs> Because I've got a T-shirt that says Peter Sculthorpe makes me moist. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> for three points, listen to this. Name the piece, the movement, and the composer. Yes. Well, it sounds like it's Baroque, yeah. so it'd be Bach or Handel. Bach, maybe? Uh, it was Bach. Yes! Yay! Yay! Uh, does anyone know the name of the piece uh, or the movement? There's some movement. <laughs> <laughs> um, no one? No, no, one no, no we've got no. nothing. It was Concerto for Two Violins in D minor. Oh. Yeah. It was the first movement. Oh! Mm. And it was oh. by J.S. Bach. Um, now, William over here has worked with some amazing Australian and international composers. How much music, when you started out, was written for the didgeridoo? Uh, it was pretty minimal. Um, so my, my sort of goal was just to like create a new repertoire for the instrument with uh, orchestras or mixed ensembles. Can I ask, because your digit is in one key and you might have a piece of music that modulates into other keys, do you, have you ever just lined up a whole lot of different, like some massive indigenous pan pipes and just... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's too hard, I just have a chainsaw on stage. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit see it because when you age your sight like if you've got a long didgeridoo and the music's written out oh, it's a long <laughs> how do you see it we work with laser beams so i will see i put it all up here basically my thing is to to learn the music inside out so i know my cue points yep. and a majority of the orchestral works i do um i will you know improvise as well kind of like a jazz artist well, listen, it would have been a shame to have had you on and not asked you to demonstrate how you combine the didgeridoo with classical music. So if we throw a bit of bark at you, can you improvise some didgeridoo around it? Bark that. Ladies and gentlemen, William Barton.
music plays. Two oh, points. Smith, William, Denise, way out in front. Eight points. Oh. Each team will be told a true musical story with three possible endings. You have to identify the correct ending. Uh, Myth, William, Denise, here is your story. During the filming of his guitar solo for the video of Just Got Lucky by 80s metal band Dokken, Guitarist George Lynch found himself in trouble when A. The lion he was posturing next to attacked him <laughs> B. The volcano he was posturing on top of erupted <laughs> Or C. The wind machine he was posturing in front of fell on him <laughs> One of those is true, which one is it? All mm. three are great mm, They're all just are. great but I get the sense that, uh, is it the word posturing, it makes me think sexual Mm, you know, there's maybe. something sexual, and maybe the lion may have got, you know, aroused. <laughs> but you know how sometimes dogs, you know, yeah. they do it to your leg, <laughs> What's, which has happened to me. Um, and not in long <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've never seen David Attenborough going, I'm here on the Serengeti. <laughs> and then. <laughs> I like it as an option, it's very good. What about what about the volcano? Do you think? Do you think? But the would he have been it? on top of a volcano? Mm. And depending on the band, depending on the amount of hair product too, whether or not it'd actually go up. Oh yeah. Mm. Which, but that brings us awesome. to wind machine because if you're talking, I imagine yeah. there'd be a lot of hair blowing, a lot of. Could have got caught in the, the fan. Oh, it would have been great to, to see though. <laughs> <laughs> hair being pulled out of someone's head. <laughs> Just got lucky. Is sexual. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm back to the lion. No, I'm back to the See, lion. I'm, I'm torn on the lion because we would have heard about it. It would have been lion on when attack. animals attack, surely. Yes. Yeah. Or at yeah. least yeah. when animals attack metal bands. <laughs> 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 what a great series that was. Yeah. Oh, Twisted Sister and the Parrot. Hilarious. <laughs> So what do you think? I'm for the wind machine. That sounds plausible, but you're for the lion, William? Denise. William? I'm thinking the wind. We'll go, how about we go... We'll go we'll, see. We'll go see. The correct answer is, guitarist George Lynch found himself in trouble when... B, the volcano... <laughs> 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 oh, nice. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well he was playing his guitar solo on the top of a volcano. Uh, it started heating up a little bit. <gasps> Apparently his shoes melted. Oh, no. And he had to be helicoptered off the volcano afterwards. But they kept it in the music video. And this is the actual scene. So basically all of that is fully dangerous, burning his feet, and according to heavy metal folklore, it was the power of his solo that caused the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Alan, Leo and Eddie, you've got a bit of a different one tonight. You have to tell me which of these is not the true ending right. uh, to the story. Here it is. With his $33 million earnings from You Can't Touch This, 90s rapper MC Hammer installed in his house A. A pool so deep the bottom could only be reached with scuba gear. 
B, miniature gold statuettes of himself as door handles. <laughs> or C, a chicken ranch. Wow. Two of those are true. Which one isn't? Isn't he a preacher or something now, or a reverend? Yeah, he, married, or... was he, he married Vince Neal from Motley Crue, didn't he? <laughs> so not a minister. Yeah, well, yes. I think MC Hammer was the celebrant at his wedding to a, you'll be surprised to know this, a, a porn star. Oh. 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 He married them, he didn't get yeah. married. Oh, <laughs> Really wondering. No, he was the celebrant. Oh, <laughs> and now pronounce you man and MC Hammer. You can touch that. <laughs> well, I, the gold statuettes you can believe. You can believe. Because yeah, I mean, you no, know, in Beverly Hills you do get statuettes of yourself. You know, when I lived there I had, did you? I had curly haired statuettes of myself on every door handle. Because it's it's day rigueur, you know. It's oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a chicken runs like in a, in an our terms, it's like a hutch, isn't it? No, no, I think this is a ranch. I think this is where you get on a horse yeah. and rope the yeah. chickens. This is where chickens go round on horseback all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ranch for chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, to me, it's the pool. Yeah. yeah, I agree, the pool. All right, the correct answer is the one thing that MC Hammond did not install in his house was B, miniature gold oh! statuettes of himself. Oh, no! He had a pool so deep the bottom could only be reached by scuba gear. It was 30 feet deep. And he also bought himself a chicken ranch, as well as 17 luxury cars, a cinema, a bowling alley, and this is my favourite, he had a customised stop sign erected out the front of his house that said, Stop Hammer Time. <laughs> Look, you have been a part of all that scene, Leo. You yep. went over to the States. It was uh, mad. You spoke to Elvis Presley on the phone. I did. It, it, was, it was a weird circumstance because I, I had an accident. I fell about 20 feet onto concrete off stage and uh, really sort of, they thought I'd ruptured my spleen. I was really ill. And a guy came and helped me out of it and then kind of took me over for a week and everything. I, I thought it was an amazing guy and I wonder who he works for. And he kept, he wouldn't say his boss and he was in Memphis. And all of a sudden I got, he put this guy on the phone and he said, this is my boss. And I went, I love your music, man. Uh, you know, you, you, you really make me feel like dancing because it was a big song at the time. And he said, uh, I want you to come out down the house and uh, maybe uh, we can work together. I, I think your energy is great, man. And, and I, I thought it was actually a friend of mine, a photographer called Terry O'Neill, who used to phone me up and pretend to be Bob Dylan. And I would believe it every time. <laughs> so I thought, oh, no, Terry, stop it, you put me on. He said, no, it's him. And I was going to go off and see him, but um, two nights later I was, remember, listening to the radio and I was taping something on the radio and they just said uh, that Elvis Presley had died. And it was so, you know, don't speak to Leo Sayer. <laughs> <laughs> Scores are, well, the same as they were for the previous round. Alan, Leo, Eddie on two points. Miff, William, Denise in front. Eight points. Right. <laughs> uh, one member of each team is going to unjumble a set of song titles. You have 30 seconds and your teammates are allowed to help. Uh, William will be unjumbling first for Miff and Denise. If you'd like to make your way up, please, ladies and gentlemen, William Barton. Good luck, William. Uh, you go that side, I'll go this side. Your time starts... Now. Um, I eat cannibals. The cannibals is halfway is down towards the bottom. Um, and stop and smell the roses. The roses is... Or the shoelaces is a good option. Yeah, yeah, the shoelaces. I kiss your... Lips. I'm not sure. Um, <sighs> little, green, little green apples, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pink, 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 pink nails. Pink jelly. Yeah. Uh, bed of roses. Bed of roses. Yeah, yeah. Bed of nails. Bed of nails. Bed of nails. Ooh. Nice work. <laughs> All right. Lips. <laughs> she, don't, she don't use lips. Oh, what a fantastic she song use lips. that was. All right, I Eat Cannibals, you got correct. That was Toto Coelho. Stop and Smell. The uh, nail. It should have been Stop and Smell yeah, the Roses. roses. Yeah. Uh, Mac Davis. Uh, I Kiss Your Eskimos. No. <laughs> it should have been I Kiss Your Lips. Uh, Little Green Apples, Roger Miller, correct. San Franciscan Nights, not San Franciscan <laughs> Jelly. Uh, <laughs> Pink shoelaces. Shoe yes, yeah. you got that one right. Wow. Bed of nails would have been great. She don't use jelly. Yeah. Uh, flaming lips and don't go near the Eskimos. Yeah. <laughs> so you got uh, three points for William Barton. Leo, you'll be unjumbling for oh, okay. Alan and Eddie. Give it up for Leo Sayer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Your time starts. 
Now, could I have this dance? I uh, got a bit of hair. Um, finger barrel polka. Yes. Um, Willie in the hand jive. Yep. Yep. <laughs> don't talk, just party. Don't get up don't, and boogie. Don't talk, just bo get up and boogie. I, I can believe. All I have to do is I believe, serial I, can, I, believe I can fly. I can believe I can fly. Ah, yeah, got, yeah, I got believe green. I can fly. Yeah. Serial killers know how to kiss. Sounds like a country song. Yep. Yeah. The, the dolphins cry. The, the dolphins cry. cry. Yeah. This could be ten Dolphins ten. cry. And yeah, um, yeah, don't talk, just three. Oh. Whoa. All right. Could I have this dance? Was Anne Murray? Excellent work. Yep. Beer barrel polka was a whole bunch of people, including Liberace. Don't talk, just kiss. Oh, oh, no, I we've said ruined Fred. it. Fred, Willie, and the hand jive, and that could have gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Johnny Otis, that was the dolphin's <laughs> cry. <laughs> if the dolphin just ate a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Get up and boogie the silver convention. Uh, I believe it. I can fly uh, Kelly. All I have to do is dream. Right. Wasn't what oh, I needed yeah. there. And serial killers know how to party. Uh, they do. <laughs> Six points for Leo. The scores are getting closer. After that round, Alan, Leo, Eddie have caught up to eight points. Only three behind Miff, William, Denise on 11 points. <laughs> Teams, hands on your buzzers. Right. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. Darren Hayes and Daniel uh, Jones. Yes? Oh, what were they called? Savage Garden. Savage Garden. <laughs> yes. In which ACDC classic would you hear reference to concrete shoes and cyanide? Yep. Jailbreak? No, it was Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Oh. Sam Cooke and Louis Armstrong both had songs about a wonderful world. Which one came first? Sam Cooke. Yeah. Yes, it was Sam Cooke he in 1960. It. What yep. a wonderful world. Louis Armstrong was 67. What was the name of Prince's band during his Diamonds and Pearls period? New Power Generation. Yes, Miff. <laughs> Your final questions. Complete these band names. Talking. Heads. Yes. Stiff little. Fingers. Yes. The small faces. Yes, and finally, boxcar. <laughs> We've had heads, fingers, and oh, no, faces. That's a box what could fleet. it be? Oh, boxcar <laughs> penis. <laughs> oh, it had to be said. Boxcar nuts, boxcar anus, anything rude. Boxcar. No. Shove it up your boxcar. <laughs> Look, you've lost the point, but I think Leo knows it. Oh. Boxcar Willie. Boxcar Willie was oh, what I was looking for. So at the end of the show, the final oh. scores were... Oh, a tie. Alan, Leo, Eddie, Yay! 12 points. Mick, William, Denise, also 12 points. Oh. I have a tiebreaker question. Who am I? I was born in Mississippi in 1981, but grew up in Louisiana and was raised as a Southern Baptist. As a child, I had a keen interest in gymnastics. At age eight, I auditioned for a children's TV channel. Yes. I reckon it's Britney Spears. It is Britney oh! Spears! Miff oh! has won the show! The winners of tonight's show, Miff William Denise! Would you please thank all our guests for tonight? Leo Sayer, Eddie Perfect, William Barton, and Denise Scott. And of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. We leave you tonight with a sneak preview of the upcoming Shane Warne the Musical. This has never been seen on television and barely been seen on stage. Eddie, what are we about to see? Uh, you're about to see a song uh, that Simone Warne sings in the second act. Shane's been off uh, on tour for about six months and she's been uh, left on her own in uh, her East Brighton house to contemplate the nature of life, uh, her relationship and the very, you know, the very meaning of the universe in general. So this is Eddie Perfect and Rosemary Harris as Simone Warne with a number called Is the Sun the Moon? <laughs> Thanks for watching Spicks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. Is the sun the moon? Are they both the same? Maybe because it comes back around at night, it 
doesn't burn my skin or shine as bright as it does in the day and if that's not the case and I'm so Or the one thing we're saying.